Hi everyone, this is Heather Lottenen from the Flourish Academy, where our goal is to empower, educate, and elevate you to create a life that you love through the art and business of photography. In this video, we are going to remove flyaways using Photoshop, but first, make sure you check out all of the free resources available on our website. A friend of mine recently sent me this image and asked me for the fastest way to remove flyaways. I'm going to show you a few different ways and obviously you can choose the method that works best for you and for the photograph that you're working on. I'm going to begin by pressing Command J, that's Control J on the PC, in order to duplicate my background layer. Let's zoom in with a Command or Control Plus and I always begin with the Spot Healing Brush. You can access that tool by pressing J on your keyboard. You just want to make sure that you have the spot healing brush selected. If you don't, you can simply click it or press shift J until you cycle through to that tool. Now the way this works is you just take your brush and you click and drag over an area you wish to remove. I didn't do a very good job there, did I? Let's try that again. If you need to make this brush bigger, you can press your right bracket key and smaller would be your left bracket key. And so what you do is you click and drag over these hairs and you hope for the best. Now it's working pretty well on this image because we have a fairly solid background. There is some variation in the background, but it's working pretty well. So you could continue on this path to your heart's content. But if it did not work well, then what I would recommend doing is pressing S in order to use the clone stamp. Let's make this brush smaller with the left bracket key and hold down Alt or Option and click to define a source and then brush over a hair in order to remove it. And you can see that that's doing a pretty good job. Let me define another source right about there and I can brush over that. Clone stamp works well in some situations, but other times the spot healing will work better. But I'm gonna show you a faster, more automated way and I've included a free action with this video. You can download it via the link below. I'm going to remove or delete layer one by pressing delete or backspace on the keyboard. Then I'm going to press Command or Control J to duplicate the background layer. Let's go to the Filter menu, Noise, and choose Dust and Scratches. And I'm gonna put this radius around 20, that's a distance, and the threshold around one and just say okay to that. Then I'm going to click my background layer again and press Command or Control J to duplicate. Let's go to Filter, Blur, Gaussian blur this time. And the amount of Gaussian blur, well, it really depends, but because I'm creating this in an action, I'm just gonna put it at a relatively neutral value for this type of image. And what I mean by this type of image is an image that is taken with a shallow depth of field. I like the number four, so 44 looks good to me. I'm gonna say okay. And I'm going to name that layer by double clicking the words background copy and just change that to blur. I'm going to double click the word layer one and name this dust. So that way I know which layer affected which change. Then I'm going to hold down shift and click the blur layer in order to select both of those layers. I'd like to group these together by pressing command or control G. Then I'd like to add a layer mask by clicking the icon at the bottom of the layers palette. And I wanna invert that layer mask. That is, I wanna hide all of these changes and I'm going to do that by inverting it, pressing Command I or Control I. Now I'm going to press B on my keyboard in order to access my brush tool. And then I'm just going to use my brush tool to brush over these hairs. I'm gonna make this a little bit smaller with my left bracket key. And you'll notice that they are disappearing quite nicely. Now let's zoom out with a Command or Control minus and just look at those few that I did right there. And that was with the action. Now this action is not going to work perfectly every time. As I mentioned earlier, it works best on images shot with a very shallow depth of field. If this action does not work well for you, then I would recommend trying the spot healing brush or the clone stamp tool. Again, to download this action, simply click the link below. I hope that you found this useful. I'll see you in the next video.